If you want to grab our men's lifestyle supplement and male advantage ebook, all links are in the bio. Back in 10, 15 years and go, this is so stupid. Why have why why was that never a thing? Like we this is food that is being touched and handled by about 10 different people going through like two or three different countries. I needed to know who was touching it, where it's been. You know, imagine, and here we go, here's how it connects to the pandemic. Would you would you a year ago have eaten an apple that had come from Wuhan? Hello guys and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be touching upon crypto again. I know you guys like the crypto videos, so this should be fun. Um, now, disclaimer, I'm not an expert. I just enjoy crypto. I've made a decent amount of money out of crypto. It's something that I enjoy. Uh, this isn't financial advice. You know, still do all your own research, whatever, and just take my word as my opinion and nothing else, please. Um, this video is going to be a little bit different to what everything else you've seen out there, really. This is based on which cryptos do I think will benefit the most post-pandemic. And it's coming from an angle of what do I think the government will, governments of the world will want to put in place now and push forward, how the world will change, how we will interact with other, others socially. And then based on that, what cryptos will obviously skyrocket off the back of this. So I'm going to do two to start with because it's very similar in the manners that they're, what they're trying to achieve um, or how I think they'll benefit post-pandemic, and that is Key and AR. Uh, AR is R-Weave. Now, Key is very much like an ID card where you'll store all your information. You know how, like, on Facebook, you get, like, that one-click author authentication? Well, like, if you want to sign up to something, as long as you've got a Facebook account, you can just click sign up with Facebook. Your, all your details are already there. You just press sign in, sign up, whatever, and it just puts you straight through. Key are trying to achieve that, but with the, like personal documents. So you might be able to store your ID, your passport, your blood type, like everything will be there. So if let's say you got in an accident, an ambulance comes and picks you up and straight away they just know, bang, 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 this is this person, this is their blood type, this is everything about them, this is, you know, this is their next of kin. Like everything is just stored in one place, like all of your essentials. You try and open a business bank account, it can take hours. Now it's just one touch, bang, with key. You know, you tap that authorize, all your information will go straight through. Address, proof of the last three months of bank statements, you know, stuff like that, passport, whatever, national insurance, you know, in the UK, I don't know what it is in America. All of that goes straight through, it gets authorized, 10 seconds later, you've opened a business bank account. It just, it just removes all the rigmarole. I think it's fantastic. And I think... Why it will benefit post-pandemic is I think governments of the world would like to know where people are at all times, what they've been doing, what their history is, what their criminal history is. You know, I, I just think they'd like to know all of that and just have it immediately accessible to the police, to the, you know, the emergency services, etc. Um, just courts, whatever. I just think they'd like to do that. And this is an excuse to put everything in place. You know, have you been vaccinated? Bang, it's on the file. There it is. Proof of... I just think they'd level that. Now, our weave is more like the Google, or Wikipedia of the future. Um, Solana, the founder of Solana, recently said that they've built up something like two terabytes of information, uh, of storage, because they're making so many transactions per day. They're using our weave to store all their stuff. And, you know, pretty much everybody is starting to use our weave. And the idea behind it is that your information is stored and it's stored forever, and it's unhackable, you know, it will always be there, it's instantly uh, retrievable. I just look at that and I think in the very much the same way as Key, I just think that our weave is going to be used by courts, police records, hospital records, lawyers, insurance companies, and I just think, you know, vaccination records, like everything like that is going to be stored on our weave. And I think rather than do it on like a computer, on the cloud, paper-based, whatever, I just think our weave is the place to do that. And I think moving forward where we're going to live in a world where there's less transparency, key in our weave, you know, I, I just think they're built perfectly to work with governments of the world to store information regarding billions of people. My opinion on it anyway. Now the next one is Engine Coin. 
E N J. I was in Engine like two years ago. I made a decent amount of money off it. I love the coin. It's more of a gaming coin, which in itself is going to skyrocket. I think any of these gaming coins are going to be great. I mean, look, during the pandemic, what was the only sports that continued? Well, it was esports because all these kids that were the esports players, they just sat at home and played from their home computers or whatever. And they didn't miss a beat. Like, everything carried on as normal. The audience is very much computer-based, whatever, or phone-based. They just log in via Twitch or what whatnot. And now they're watching all these gamers, like the professional gamers, as if it was a live sports event, like they were there anyway. They didn't miss a beat. They actually gained momentum. They probably gained so many followers. Esports is almost unbreakable. Like, it's very hard to... I mean... Once you have a console or a computer, you never really need anything else again, unless a new game comes out or whatnot, but it's just very easy to, easy to do. You know, you can be out of shape, you can be 100 years old, 10 years old, you can be female, male, like, I just, it's unbreakable. It's a great, it's a great idea, or it's a great sport moving forward. I think it probably will overtake every other sport in the world if it hasn't already. Um, but the reason I want to talk about Engine is they're looking to move into real estate. Now, about four years ago, I had an idea regarding real estate, and I thought, how much time gets wasted in real estate, or it's, you know, it's um, property if you're in the UK, regarding viewings for companies? Well, they have to keep going out and showing people around a home. Then that person goes, ah, I didn't realize it was only this small, or I didn't realize it was next to this sort of building. Oh, it's next to a railway track. Didn't realize, don't want it. There's so many wasted viewings. Now, I always had an idea to kind of make everything video-based, to just film the whole house, then film the whole area, then film, like, the walk to the local school so that the parents could see how far the trip was for the kids or the local drive to the school, the pubs in the area, everything, like, make it a holistic package and almost turn each house into, like, a travel show so that when somebody booked a viewing, you knew they were proper interested. Well, Engine are going to try and do something similar where... You know, estate agents during the pandemic, it was a nightmare. You know, you had to... I, I actually met one for my dad's house. They were wearing masks. They had to stay away from you. It was hard to hear them. You know, and bef that was when it was less serious. When it was really serious, nobody was buying homes. You know, it was very, very hard to do. Nobody wanted to visit an estate agent. We were all stuck in our homes. Like, they weren't even open. And they had to do kind of online viewings and kind of adapt how they did it in terms of videos and pictures and 3D models and whatnot. Well, what Engine are trying to do is cut out the middlemen. And they're going to have crypto contracts in place where there'll be two different parties, okay? The buyer and the seller. No middlemen. And if you want to, you know, the, the seller puts the contract in place, you know, with the help of better technology and everything online, there might be a video of the whole of, of the place. You can deal with everything through that individual. You don't even have to meet. You can just purchase that property immediately. You know, as long as the person on the other end approves, bang, bang, contract goes through, it's dealt with. There's no estate agent fees. There's no extra shit that comes with it. It's just such a more efficient process and it changes hands a lot quicker. I, I don't know if deeds will be stored on there or whatnot, but it just makes its flow so much easier. It's just so much quicker. And I think based on the way that people are looking at real estate now, estate agency and going, you know, we don't necessarily need somebody to show us around the home if we can see the whole holistic package. If Engine can present that idea that I explained, which I assume they will, they're an intelligent company, and then have the contracts in place, they're changing the whole industry and taking it over. And then that's not even to mention if it becomes virtual real estate as well. You know, like Decentraland, Mana Coin, where they might have both on, on, on show, where they do a VR world where you can actually buy real estate in the virtual world then in real life. Who knows where that goes, but in terms of how the pandemic will change it, I just think people looked at real estate agents and whatever and thought we could bypass all of this. Like, we don't necessarily need it all. The next one is XRP. <laughs> whatever you think of the pandemic, if it was created, if it was just happened naturally, okay, if it did really happen the way the news likes to tell us, okay, which is all propaganda, so I don't believe a lot of it, it's inevitable, and this has been coming a long, long time, everything is pointing towards a one-world government and a one-world currency, 
Okay, this has been something that's been pushed forward for for decades now, and I think they're very close to being able to do it. Now, XRP is perfectly positioned. It's the most it's the most environmentally friendly. Um, it has everything in place to be able to do it. It's a better option than Bitcoin to be able to pull that off. Um, I just think once it wins the SEC lawsuit, like completely wins it, gets everything out of the way, it's going to skyrocket to like $20, something like that, which will make people a lot of money. If you hodl just a few more years and it becomes the adopted one world currency, which if you look into a few conspiracy videos, which are actually really helpful in crypto, it's been spoken about quite a lot that that's the coin they're going to use, okay? If that happens, it becomes a one world currency. I mean, guys, that's an absolute game changer. Now, who knows if it w if it does, you know, I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying the possibility that it could could sk skyrocket the price leading up to that. They might switch and use something else, but, you know, it might not become a one world currency. There might never be. It just looks like a more feasible thing that's going to happen right now, okay? It's just, just my verdict, and I've got a lot of XRP. I'm sitting on it. I'm waiting, okay? And it's... It's not even just one world currency either. It's, it's connected to DeFi. If you really look into it, it's connected to DeFi. And I just think XRP has massive potential. Now, the next one I'm really bullish on is VET, VE Chain. The reason being is it deals very much with logistics. So, for example, if you want to track where a piece of fruit came from, if you can scan it, and then it shows you where it was grown, who's handled it, which countries it's been through, how long it's been sat on that shelf, how long has it been since it, you know, was first grown or picked and whatnot. Well, you've got a lot of details there which are essential to your life because you're eating that piece of fruit or whatever or meat or eggs or whatnot. Why has this never been a thing? Why has this never been in place? I think we'll look back in 10, 15 years and go, this is so stupid why have why why was that never a thing like we this is food that is being touched and handled by about 10 different people going through like two or three different countries i needed to know who was touching it where it's been you know imagine and here we go here's how it connects to the pandemic would you would you a year ago have eaten an apple that had come from wuhan had been handled by somebody in wuhan or even just china in general Probably not, right? A lot of people weren't buying electronic goods from China because they were shit scared about that. I think with VET tracking everything, especially in the food industry, VET is going to be able to track and, like I said, give you all the details of where it's come from, who's handled it, how many countries has it been to, how long has it been since it got picked, how long has it been on the shelf for, you know, all these different details that you'll need to know. Maybe even calories when it all comes up, you know, who knows. But I think that's so essential because then you know who you're buying from. You know if you want to support that country. You know if it's been handled by a country that's just had an outbreak. I mean, it's a no-brainer to me, guys. I think sit on VT for like the next three years, you will not regret it, okay? I just For me, that just makes perfect sense. Okay, guys, the next one is RSR. It's currently being used by Venezuela. It should have been used by El Salvador. El Salvador decided to use Bitcoin. Um, RSI is a de-inflationary coin. Why this is fantastic is in the last year, I think the US printed 50% of all the money in existence in the last year, okay? So all the, all the money in existence in the US, every dollar in existence, 50% of it was printed last year. It's never been done before, that's crazy. They're printing money in record numbers. Um, I've seen rumors that they're sending it to large companies to put on their balance sheets and fake profits for the year, etc. just to kind of, oh, you know, the recession hasn't hit yet. We're in a recession, okay? We've really been smacked by a recession. The economy is being propped up by just printing too much money. When there's too much money, you're just asking. When too much money gets printed, it becomes worthless. This happened in this has happened in multiple countries. I think Zimbabwe, where they were taking wheelbarrows of cash to the shop to get milk and bread. People started using it as wallpaper because it was so worthless. The more you print, the more you're just asking for hyperinflation, superinflation, however you want to say it. And um, RSR can protect against that. And I just think, you know, that could end up being XRP. But RSR is a very good shout for a lot of smaller countries who might see RSR as a great option. Um, 
And if it does 10x in value, then those economies are going to 10x too, which is just fantastic for those economies. And I just think, I just think that's a plausible outcome that the whole world just experiences hyperinflation. Every country's printing so much money that they just put themselves in shit street, and they're going to need something like RSR with a limited supply to bail them out. In my opinion, uh, the next one is SNX, which is synthetics. Now. We can see this year banks can't be trusted. We've seen in the past with companies like Northern Rock, banks cannot be trusted. Like, you think about what a bank actually is. It's basically you lot saying, hey, Chris, we're going to give you all of our money. Just hold it for us, would you? And when we need it, just give us, you know, just give it back to us. It's just so silly. It's like one central bank holding all of the money or multiple central banks. But it's kind of just one centralized kind of industry just holding all of your money and you trust them to do so and that's why DeFi is just going to be so essential moving forward and synthetics is at the helm of DeFi, in my opinion um it's already established you know lean is very good too it's like it's been described as synthetics on steroids but synthetics is obviously more established every top expert expert in the industry thought it would hit a thousand dollars this year um, I still think it will hit about three, four hundred dollars at some point, which would make people very, very fucking rich. Okay, if you put a decent bag into it, I just, I just think DeFi is coming. Is it coming quickly? I'm not sure. I think the pandemic will speed it up because people are seeing the flaws of money being held by banks, them being able to print so much more money. It's just, I just don't think the economy should just be propped on just a handful of fucking people at the top who are just controlling all of our money and can just say at any point, bankrupt. Everybody, you know, all of your money's gone. So I know DeFi is going to come in with synthetics being at the helm of that. I just think it's the safest bet. I wouldn't be shocked if five years down the line it really takes over. Maybe it will take 10 I love long-term investments. I just think that's where you should be putting your money right now. Synthetics is currently at like nine dollars, five, six pounds. I've got a huge bag of it. It's my biggest holding. I keep buying every time it dips below anything below ten. To be honest, anything about below a hundred dollars is probably amazing. But anything below ten dollars, just snap it up, guys. In my opinion, you know, it's not financial advice, just my opinion. But I'm snapping it up like crazy. The next one is Chili C H Z. Um, as we said with esports, it, it did amazing this year, but all the other sports really suffered. Their finances are terrible. Teams like Barcelona and Real Madrid are pretty much bankrupt. Um, they need to find a new way of monetizing, which is outside of just getting fans in stadiums, ticket revenue, you know, watching games, whatnot, buying merchandise. And Chili's is a great way to do that with fan tokens, you know, where it gives you exclusive rights to to certain things like maybe player shirts, auctioning things off, um, first but like voting rights for the club. I guess the world in the future where the the fans maybe own the club and they all vote on the transfer targets, who they want to sign, who they want to bring in in the draft, who's their number one pick. That could be a thing, and you pay for rights to be able to do that. Chili's is doing that very well. It's kind of the authority right now, and it already has big names signed up. The next one is Smart Key, S Key. You look at things like Airbnb, okay? With Airbnb, people don't want to meet each other anymore. People are scared to handshake. Like, <laughs> people are scared to exchange keys with each other. With S-Key, you can do it on your phone, okay? So you hire a car, you can go up to that car, wherever it's left, go up with your phone, bleep, and you're in, okay? It's a smart key, allow you to do that. You can go up to the door of the Airbnb that you've managed to rent, you go up, bleep, you're in. I think that's the future. I don't think people are gonna wanna do interactions as much anymore. People are gonna be petrified. Are you vaccinated? I don't know. You know, Do I wanna shake hands with you? I'm not sure. Is there even a need to meet? We've proven with things like Zoom, everything can be done virtually. I just think it will be a less social world in that sense where people will do more of their business and interactions away from one another. I think they'll be able to never meet one another but yet use their house, never meet one another and yet use their car, whatever. I, th I think it, it, it will be able to be done via S-Key. There'll be a shared responsibility. It, you know, in the great thing with Esky as well is if somebody is in your house and they won't leave, they're claiming squatters' rights or something, you can just turn off the gas, the electric, the heating, whatever, 
And, you know, they're going to have to leave, aren't they? It's just, it's not great at that point. You can cut the engine on your car, obviously, as soon as they slow down or whenever they pull over, that's it, cut the car, it won't start back up, so then the police can go and get it. Like, it's just so much more efficient in that sense as well. But I think linked with the fact that people won't want to go and meet someone now, shake hands, do the social interaction thing, I just think it's going to be so much better. Or even they might want to do that, but people have learned that they don't have to. Esky's going to come in. I think that's how it's going to benefit post-pandemic. Now, the final one is uh, AVA, which is a travel company. Um, I forgot the exact name of the travel company for some reason. Travala, I think. Yeah, I think it's Travala. AVA. And um, I spotted this company like two years ago. I just didn't get in for some reason, but it's like 20, 30x since I saw it. So a little bit gutted. I wish I'd got in. As soon as I realized how more efficient crypto could be and with it being with it being decentralized and being able to keep document like for example guys you go to an airport you need your passport you might need your like ID um, you might need the papers where you've printed the documents off so that you can put them through at the boarding pass or whatever like there's so much fucking shit to have to deal with. You've got your insurance, your travel insurance and stuff like that. There's just so many documents. How many people have forgotten their passport or lost a document abroad? It's just not efficient. Well, via crypto, you can keep all those documents. Let's say AVA links with key and then you've got all those documents saved. So when you get to the airport, you show them your phone, you press one button, bleep, you're through. You know, it bypasses like that first 30, 40 minute bollocks where you're having to check in and all that shit. It's just an absolute nightmare. Now, how does this benefit post-pandemic? Well, they're kind of doing a, number one, it's more efficient because if somebody's been vaccinated, it's gonna be on that record, okay? It's all gonna be saved. So when they get to the airport, bleep, bang, straight through, you know they've been vaccinated, they'll go straight through. You know, maybe people can be segregated based on whether they've been vaccinated or not, you know, things that come with that. Um, where they've been, where you've traveled, you know, all of that's going to be tracked. You know, if you've been to this country, that's a high alert country right now. You better watch out. Instead of like, oh, I don't know, where's that flight coming from? You just know who these people are. When you go through a scanner, bleep, it's just, you know, it's tracking it on your phone. It has more details. This is the, mod this is the world we're going to be living in in the future, I'm telling you guys. But also AVA have just um, become a competitor of Airbnb. They're trying to do their very own. It's going to be detached. It's going to be decentralized in the same sense that I described how S key is going to do it, okay? And I think linked with it being travel, they're going to be able to do the two together. So you're going to be able to book your flights. You're going to be able to book your where you're staying, etc. All as one package in that manner where you don't have to meet anybody. All your data is tracked. The person who you're renting from, sorry, the person who you're renting to knows oh, this person's been vaccinated, here's their travel history, here's where they've been, they're safe to come into my house, that's okay. You know, all these sort of details are going to tie in together. And I think the future of travel is going to be all of your details just stored in one place. You're not going to be able to be sat there with a, a passport, your insurance, um, your boarding pass now, your ID, like every all this other shit that comes with it. And I think AVA is going to be at the forefront of that. And personally, post-pandemic, I think it's really going to take off. If you want to grab our men's lifestyle supplement and male advantage ebook, all links are in the bio.